and I am a Tableau and Autrix consultant for the Information Lab. Welcome to the second video in a series focused on uh, installing, configuring and working with uh, the Autrix server product. Uh, this is a second webinar. Uh, in the first webinar we set up our environment which we're going to install Autrix server upon. Uh, this second webinar, we're going to cover actually installing and configuring our Autrix server in the first place. So what I'm going to do is remote into my server machine and then we'll move forward from there. Once you've remote desktoped onto your um, server machine, um, what you'll see on my screen is that I actually have some configuration notes that I've just um, created for myself which will just make the uh, actual configuration process a bit easier. So I've got information about the um, public DNS or the, essentially the web address uh, for my server. Um, I've also got information about the SMTP um, or the mail server which I want to use, uh, Autrix server to make use of so it can um, send emails to my users. So that's the second portion of the notes that you see in front of you. So when you're installing uh, Autrix server, the first thing you need to do is actually download the product. Um, the best place to do this is to uh, open Internet Explorer or your chosen web browser of choice and navigate to licenses.autrix.com. On this page, you'll then um, be given a prompt to um, log in. Of course, if you don't have a create uh, an account, just create one at the bottom but I of course already do. Um, for those of you that have a community account, it's the same uh, login credentials for that. So once you've entered those, you can obviously just hit sign in. Uh, just a word of caution, this, this website's a bit slower than it should be. Um, so just be a bit patient and, and the uh, page will load eventually. Once the licensing portal has um, loaded, what we need to do is find the Alteryx server product download. So on this left-hand window, we obviously have the product downloads for the different um, products which Alteryx sells and that we have access to. So I'm going to hit and select Alteryx server. What we can then do is choose whether we want to install uh, Alteryx server 2020.1 or whether we want to install um, previous versions of Alteryx server. In this case, I'm going to install uh, the latest version, which is Alteryx Server 20.1. 20, 20 so I'm going to go through to that um, next pane. And then we get presented with two um, download options. So we can uh, download the Alteryx Server installer and we can download something called the Alteryx Server Usage Report. The latter we're going to come back to in a uh, later webinar, but for now we're just going to download the Alteryx Server install 2020.1. And I'm going to select run. Once the um, Audric server installer has downloaded and has opened, then I'll be back with you. Once the installer has loaded, um, we now need to configure where we want to um, install Audric server to. Now, something we did when we configured our server in the first place was we created a um, disk volume dedicated for Alteryx, which we map to our E drive. So I'm just going to replace uh, C with E, and then I'm going to install Alteryx to that location. Uh, everything else I'll just leave as it is, and then I'm going to hit next. Of course, it comes with a, a licensing agreement, which you should uh, look through in detail before you agree. Uh, I've read it thousands of times, I assure you, so I'm just going to hit next. And then it's going to go through the installer process. Now, again, this is going to take a bit of time, roughly five to ten minutes, so um, I'll be back with you once it's complete. Once the install process is completed, you'll be given a prompt about whether you want to uh, actually configure the server, uh, close the installer, or install the predictor tools. What I would recommend is that you install the predictive tools and then we configure the server after that stage is completed. So I'm going to select this option and then hit finish. 
and it's going to load a um, new installer specific for the predictive tools. So once that menu uh, appears in front of us, I'll be back with you. Once the um, predictive tools installer is loaded, we just need to move through the installer. So just a few clicks of the old next button. Specify where we want to install it. And then we'll let the installer run. Um, again, as I've sort of mentioned, this is another five minute or so test. So uh, please bear with me while the installer loads and I'll be back with you once that's finished. Once the predictive tools have finished installing, what we want to do is uncheck the run Alteryx now option because we first need to configure our Alteryx server and then we're going to hit finish. I'm then going to close our Internet Explorer browser. Now on our desktop we're now going to have um, two shortcuts added. We're going to have one for um, Alteryx Designer because Alteryx Server ships with an Alteryx Designer install as well. And we also have one called uh, Alteryx System Settings. This is where we can configure our um, Alteryx Server. So I'm going to double click and run the Alteryx System Settings. If this is the um, first time we run the Alteryx System Settings, um, it's going to ask us to install a license, so I'm just going to hit OK. Um, and then it's going to load uh, a licensing window. Um, in this case, I'm just going to sign up for a uh, free trial. Now, in order to activate our free trial, they're obviously going to take some um, personal details, so I'm just going to add my email address. And then I'm going to hit uh, Continue. Now, something that I should remember is that we're using a uh, US keyboard on our server. So I'm just going to use that and then hit continue. And that should apply as a um, trial license for our server. So I can then hit X. And once you hit X, the um, system settings will then uh, load. So what we're going to do is move through the system setting configuration. So it just gives us some basic uh, information to start with, which is essentially the current um, current settings as is from, from a base point of view. So I'm going to hit next. Um, we want to set up a, a complete Alteryx server. So the controller, worker and gallery are all on this um, single machine. And you can also opt in or out of sending your uh, usage data Alteryx server. Remember, it can be quite valuable to them, but I would also understand why you might not want to send it to them. So just uh, consider that option carefully. And then we'll hit next. Now we want to configure our um, global workspace. Again, um, this was the whole point of creating our uh, e-disk volume. So I'm just going to change C here to E and then I'm going to hit next. And you'll see that all the subsequent uh, references for the workspaces, the logging spaces, etc., are all now referencing our um, eDrive. We don't need to change anything on this page initially. Um, we, again, same for this one. At present, we've got no uh, database credentials. You see the host is not available, username is not available. Um, this is because you have to run the uh, system settings or run through the system settings once before those credentials become available. Something that might be interesting to your business and it's something that we do internally ourselves is uh, think about whether you want to use a user managed MongoDB or the one that comes with the Alteryx install. In this case, I'm just gonna choose the one uh, with this install and hit next. I'm not gonna change any settings on this window. Um, the one thing you may want to change on this work and configuration tab is the one that specifies the amount of workflows that are allowed to run simultaneously. The default setting is set to one. It's recommended that you um, use the number of cores divided by two of a proxy of the sort of maximum amount of workflows you can run simultaneously. So we've got a four core uh, license, which is the default license, and we're running on a four core server, so I'm going to up that to two. But if you want more information, you can always hit the question mark here. I'm just going to hit next. 
Um, we also have the ability to run the worker as a um, different user. Um, we don't run a uh, Windows or Active Directory type environment, so that's not something we are personally interested in. We are a Gmail organization, so I'm going to sort of ignore that for now. But it may be interesting to yourselves. Again, I'm going to move through some of these fairly quickly. Now on the Gallery General tab, we have what is known as the base address. So this is the um, web address for users to be able to navigate to our uh, Alteryx Gallery via the internet. Now, what we want to do here is actually use the public DNS of our uh, server machine to provide access to the web because obviously local host is only relevant should they be accessing the gallery on this uh, specific machine. So what I'm going to do is take the public DNS from my um, notepad file and I'm going to paste it where it says uh, local host. And what we want to do is make sure we keep the um, forward slash gallery suffix on the end and keep the HTTP uh, at the front of our URL because at present in our environment I haven't yet set up um, HTTPS or SSL. We can then um, choose some different authentication uh, methods. I'm going to use built-in authentication, which means um, users will have to sign up themselves um, using their, their own credentials when they log in or they create their own credentials rather than the Windows authentication that we might have in our business. Because as I said, we're a Gmail organization. We could potentially use SAML as an option for us. What we do want to do on this window for the first time when we're doing this is specify the default gallery administrator account. So this is going to be my uh, email address. So this is the first user who's going to be given the ability to uh, log in to your Alteryx gallery environment. Um, and they will be given or granted administration access upon sign up. So they then have the ability to uh, add further users, create private studios, etc. I'm then going to hit next. And now we have the ability to specify uh, the SMTP or the mail server which our um, Alteryx server is going to use to send emails to users. So potentially if they've forgotten their password, the uh, server is going to have to email the user with a password reset option. Um, when people upload content, etc., you may set up alerts. So that is all done with this gallery SMTP configuration. So you can disable this if you want, but it's a really useful feature, so I'm of course going to use it. Now with the from email address, I'm going to, just going to use something like uh, gallery at, need to remember US keyboard, the information lab, .co.uk. Now, we, as I've mentioned previously, we're a Gmail organization, so our SMTP credentials are all based around that. So the host name for us is smtp.gmail.com. It, uh, it will differ if you're a Windows or uh, Outlook orientated business. Um, now, my username, if you're a Gmail organization, is just your uh, Gmail credentials. That's not it. And then the password is also the password to your Gmail account. Now, the port in the case of uh, Gmail and the port I'm going to use in this case is uh, port 587. And I do want to check the option to use SSL. Now, again, this is specific to um, Gmail organizations, but what you will need to make sure is that. Um, you allow less secure apps to run on your Gmail account. So in a browser where you are logged into Gmail, if you navigate to this um, URL, you want to enable less secure apps. Um, I've already done that process. So if I hit test, the test should run uh, successfully. So this is SMTP settings are valid. This is going to send a um, 
dummy email from my uh, account to the gallery account. Now this is actually essentially a format mask. So I'm going to get a uh, address not found email as you see in the top bar. Uh, but that doesn't matter in, in terms of future emails. I'm then going to hit next and we're going to move through the rest of the process. So I'm not going to change anything at this stage. And I'm not going to make any adjustments to either the engine or the proxy either. Having said that, you may want to make some adjustments to uh, the login di directory, which is blank. Um, if the uh, login di directory is blank, you're not going to have any uh, logs to look at from your workflows. So you may want to add a uh, login directory. But that information is um, stored in the uh, Mongo database anyway, so that there is still the capability to get uh, workflow run logs. I'm then going to hit uh, next, and then I'm going to hit next again. And when I hit finish, whenever you run the system settings and you hit finish, um, the Alteryx server is going to restart. So that's something important to know. If you make any changes and hit finish, you're going to bring down and then bring your service back up. So it's something to be aware of. This may take a couple of minutes, so just bear with us as we move through this process. Once the server has restarted um, correctly, we can see the summary statuses for each of the objects which form our Alteryx server environment, so the controller, worker, and gallery. With the gallery, we're presented with our new um, URL, which has been configured to run upon. So what I can do is select um, our public DNS forward slash gallery to now uh, navigate to the gallery in the web, and you, you will see it loads. Uh, that's a positive sign. What I can now do is sign in from that first user account that we specified in the system settings. So I'm going to go to sign in. And then on this window, the user can't just sign in because they haven't got actually got a password yet. So what they need to do is create an account for the first time. So I'm going to go to create one now. And then I'm going to configure some uh, basic details. So my... Um, first name, last name, the email address which was specified in the system settings as the default uh, admin, and then I'm going to specify a password as well. At the bottom, we can then choose uh, to sign up. Now, something to make note of is you can specify the time zone which your account is usually active from. So just be aware of that. That's something that you can configure. And then at this point, I'm going to go to sign up. So you'll see that our Alteryx server environment is uh, up and running and I'm logged into Ben Moss's account and what I can do is go to the admin pane and I can then think about uh, adding new users, um, adding subscriptions, um, configuring districts, configuring the look and interface of our Alteryx gallery. But in this case, what I want to test next is whether this gallery is actually accessible from my local machine rather than from the um, internet on our actual server. So what I'm going to do is uh, just quickly copy my public DNS out of my config notes. So I'm going to paste this into the browser on my local machine. I'm then going to prefix the uh, public DNS with HTTP colon colon and forward slash gallery because this is the URL which we wanted the um, gallery to run on and then hit enter and you'll see that it loads so I can communicate successfully with my Alteryx server environment of course I've already signed up so now I should be able to sign in with those credentials that I set up at the previous point and you see that I can sign in successfully so what we've done there is we've successfully installed and configured our um, Alteryx server environment. In the next webinar in this series, what I'm going to go over is some of the admin tasks that we should look to do when we're first creating our uh, Alteryx server environment. So that would be things like adding new users, adding districts, and then actually um, checking that we can successfully load a workflow from Alteryx Designer into Alteryx Server.
Thank you for watching.